Deep within the remote volcanic landscape of northern Nevada, one of the world's largest lithium reserves lies buried beneath ancient ash and rock. Yet despite its immense economic potential, much of this region remains off-limits, not because of politics, but because of something far more volatile stirring below the surface. Far from the familiar names like Yellowstone or Long Valley, a lesser-known volcanic field is beginning to attract scientific attention for all the wrong reasons. This is the McDermott Caldera, a silent giant that may not remain quiet for much longer. Straddling the Nevada-Oregon border, McDermott once produced an eruption so powerful that it reshaped the Earth's crust over 16 million years ago. For decades, it was believed to be dormant, relegated to geological history. But recent satellite data has begun to rewrite that narrative. The ground is rising, subsurface temperatures are subtly increasing, and deep tremors, too faint to be felt by humans but clearly picked up by seismometers, are rippling beneath its fractured crust. Something is happening here something that has caught the attention of volcanologists around the world. While Yellowstone captures headlines and fuels speculation, McDermott has quietly shown signs of behavior that warrant serious concern. Anomalies in ground deformation, specifically an unusual uplift pattern, are occurring not in the center, but asymmetrically along the southeastern rim of the caldera. This odd bulging is especially intriguing to geophysicists because it suggests the presence of a migrating subsurface pressure source, possibly magma in a semi-liquid state, moving through pre-existing fault lines etched by ancient eruptions. The caldera's location makes the situation even more complex. It lies at a tectonic crossroads, where the basin and range province is pulling the crust apart even as volcanic arcs continue to evolve across the American West. This constant geological tension weakens the crust, creating ideal conditions for magma to exploit those weaknesses. In essence, the region is being primed from below and stretched from above, a dangerous combination. To monitor these changes, scientists have deployed a sophisticated array of GPS stations and borehole tilt meters capable of detecting ground movement as small as a millimeter. These instruments, along with radar interferometry from satellites, are now revealing a persistent and accelerating uplift trend. Advanced 3D models are being built to map the rising terrain with increasing precision, offering crucial clues into what may be occurring miles beneath the surface. What makes these developments even more unsettling is their similarity to patterns observed at other calderas before significant unrest. Campi Flegre in Italy and Laguna del Maule in Chile both exhibited asymmetric uplift and increased seismic swarms before undergoing hydrothermal surges and magmatic intrusions. In both cases, subtle early warning signs preceded more explosive phases of volcanic awakening. If McDermott is on a similar trajectory, the implications could extend far beyond geological curiosity. The region's vast lithium resources, environmental sensitivities, and proximity to populated areas all raise urgent questions. What happens if this long slumbering caldera is beginning to stir again? What does that mean for the communities, ecosystems, and industries that surround it? This isn't a simple case of localized ground swelling. What's unfolding could be the initial tremor of a much larger geological event. The Earth is gradually, yet unrelentingly, flexing in this region. In the world of supervolcanoes, even the faintest shifts can herald the early stages of reawakening. To investigate this potential transformation, Scientists have turned to cutting-edge tools, drone-mounted infrared cameras capable of capturing thermal patterns across the landscape. These aren't just visual instruments. They register the silent exhalations of heat seeping from the Earth's crust, whispering of ancient forces stirring below. Initial surveys have uncovered unexpected heat signatures in regions once presumed dormant 
especially around ghostly remnants of old fumarolic zones and mineral-streaked ridges that now shimmer faintly in the infrared spectrum. But it's not just about rising temperatures, it's about mounting questions. On the ground, handheld thermal detectors and gas probes have registered elevated emissions of carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide, gases often associated with deep magmatic reservoirs. In several spots, a distinct sulfuric scent permeates the air, a spectral trace of volatile gases threading their way through fractured rock. Recent magnetotelluric studies, which probe the Earth's electromagnetic signals, have revealed zones of low resistivity beneath the central caldera. These electrically conductive layers suggest the presence of heat-saturated rock, likely housing pressurized fluids, or possibly even magma, just a few kilometers beneath the surface. Alarming patterns are emerging. Each new thermal scan expands the boundary of known anomalies, with signs of heat creeping steadily into previously stable regions. Scientists are approaching their findings with deliberate caution, yet the data increasingly point to a geosystem that is not winding down, but reanimating. Some experts describe it as a long dormant hydrothermal engine beginning to stutter back to life, a subterranean mechanism of stone, steam, and pressure, murmuring once more beneath the crust. While these changes may offer tantalizing opportunities for geothermal energy, a more sobering possibility looms. Could this be the prelude to a much more violent geological chapter? History warns that areas like McDermott rarely fracture without first offering a quiet, cryptic signal. Sometimes, the only herald is a low, persistent hum. These recent signs may be more than geological noise. They may be the Earth's early whispers that something is beginning to stir. Complementing these thermal anomalies is a growing pattern of micro-seismic activity. A network of temporary seismic sensors, strategically positioned in silent, concentric arrangements, now blankets the region, their sensitive instruments tuned to detect even the slightest tremors. Over recent months, they have captured a disturbing rhythm clusters of minute, repetitive earthquakes beneath zones of known uplift. These quakes, many less than magnitude 1.0, resemble the faint ticking of a clock whose purpose is not yet clear. Some of these seismic swarms originate between 3 to 7 kilometers below the surface, deep within the brittle mid-crust, a zone where pressurized fluids and molten material often seek paths of escape. A few of the recorded waveforms hint at something more ominous, volcanic tremor, the continuous vibration often tied to the ascent of magma. This is not the erratic jolt of tectonic motion. This is a measured, almost deliberate pulse. Perhaps most unsettling is the recurrence of identical seismic signatures emerging in the same locations hours or sometimes days apart. These are known as repeating earthquakes, a phenomenon suggesting that pressure is being cyclically released and then rebuilt within precise fault structures. It's as though the planet itself is wrestling with an internal force straining to break free. What makes this seismic activity even more unsettling is its striking correlation with environmental factors, fluctuations in atmospheric pressure, rapid snowmelt, and even the subtle rise of groundwater levels. These surface changes appear to exert an influence on the timing and frequency of tremors, as if the very crust of the Earth is hyper-aware, responding not only to the deep, hidden forces below, but also to the faintest shifts above. To volcanologists, these are not mere anomalies. They form a rhythmic signature, a geological heartbeat. And once such a pulse is recognized, it cannot be ignored. In regions overshadowed by ancient caldras like McDermott, it's often not the thunderous jolts that foretell catastrophe, but rather the persistent quiet quakes that steadily tighten the subterranean pressure, setting the stage for an eventual release. 
The initial interest in McDermott's geology stemmed from its lithium reserves. Yet what began as mineral exploration has uncovered a deeper geological narrative. Core samples retrieved from deep drilling operations have unveiled layers rich in clay and altered volcanic glass intertwined with zeolites and rare earth elements, markers of intense chemical reactions between superheated fluids and agedy. Volcanic deposits. Among the most revealing indicators is the transformation of smectite, a soft clay, into elite, a more thermally stable mineral. This mineral transition functions as a geothermometer, suggesting prolonged exposure to temperatures surpassing 200 degrees Celsius. Such a process cannot occur in isolation. It necessitates a consistent, powerful heat source, one characteristic of an active or recently reawakened geothermal system. Geochemical testing further reinforces this scenario. Elevated levels of boron, lithium, and arsenic have been detected elements known for their mobility in hydrothermal fluids and often associated with magmatic emissions or deeply circulating waters. Boron, in particular, is a key tracer. Its behavior under high heat points to volcanic gases dissolving into subterranean aquifers. Isotopic analysis of oxygen-18 and deuterium in hydrated minerals reveals signatures that deviate significantly from local precipitation, indicating interaction with deeply sourced thermal waters or magmatic fluids. Remarkably, these isotopic fingerprints echo those found in active geothermal fields in Iceland and Kamchatka, regions infamous for their volcanic activity. Together, these mineralogical and chemical clues paint a picture of a thermal system that may have remained alive far into the Quaternary period, or may have reignited in the modern era. If this deeply rooted heat persists, McDermott may not be the dormant remnant it once seemed. Instead, it could represent a vital, though underestimated, node in a vast tectonic and volcanic network stretching across the northern basin and range province, an arc that shadows the fading trail of the Yellowstone hotspot. McDermott is part of a chain of calderas tracing a fiery path across the Great Basin, remnants of an ancient geological journey shaped by the steady migration of the North American plate over a fixed mantle plume. This slow drift over a mantle hotspot left behind a progression of volcanic scars from McDermott in the west to the restless expanse of Yellowstone in the east. But emerging data suggest McDermott may be more than a dormant scar. Recent satellite gravimetric analyses have revealed startling anomalies beneath this chain. Regions where mass appears absent, replaced by lower density material. The likely candidate, partially molten rock. In essence, magma, subdued yet very much alive, may still breathe beneath McDermott's surface. If recent theories prove correct, then the long-forgotten McDermott caldera may not be as dormant as once assumed. It could still be connected to a vast subterranean magmatic network, an arterial conduit stretching deep beneath the surface and linking it to Yellowstone's volatile mantle plume. This possibility gains even more weight when structural fault maps are considered. They reveal unmistakable geological ties between McDermott and nearby volcanic formations such as Steens Mountain and the Owyhee Plateau. These interconnected faults may serve as hidden pathways, enabling magma or pressurized superheated fluids to migrate silently across regional boundaries, possibly activating other dormant zones along the way. The land itself appears to whisper of change. Lava domes at McDermott, long believed to be geologically inert, are now exhibiting signs of gentle surface uplift and renewed weathering. These subtle deformations suggest that pressure might be mounting beneath rock layers once thought to be lifeless. Could these be the earliest signs of a deeper awakening? These aren't questions confined to academic curiosity. They point to a looming uncertainty. Is this the beginning of a reawakening?
one that could eventually culminate in the eruption of a supervolcano? If McDermott were to erupt, even moderately, the consequences would be immediate and far-reaching. Volcanic ash could blanket large portions of Nevada and Oregon, while finer particles drift eastward, disrupting flight paths across the continent and contaminating drinking water from the Rockies to the Midwest. Roads would become impassable, solar arrays rendered useless, livestock fatally affected, and power systems strained beyond capacity. But should the caldera produce a full-scale super-eruption, the northern hemisphere could be thrust into a volcanic winter. Temperatures might fall by several degrees, triggering widespread agricultural collapse. Food shortages would ripple through global supply chains. Economies, already stretched thin, could fracture under the weight of cascading disruptions. The last time North America experienced such an event was over 640,000 years ago, when Yellowstone's eruption left a crater visible from space. McDermott was born from the same geologic source, the same deep-seated plume responsible for that ancient cataclysm. If it were to follow the same path, the devastation could be nearly unimaginable. Tens of thousands might be forced to flee their homes with little warning. The sky could darken for weeks with suspended ash. Acid rain would harm already fragile ecosystems. Unlike hurricanes or tornadoes, this wouldn't come with a predictable countdown. There would be no televised evacuations, just seismic murmurs, chemical emissions, and then silence. A terrible silence, broken only when the earth fractures open. Is this alarmism? Or is it a sober recognition of a sleeping force with the potential to reshape continents? The central concern now is no longer if McDermott is waking, but whether humanity is remotely prepared if it does. And the questions don't end there. If McDermott is stirring, could others follow? Scientists now contemplate the unsettling possibility of a cascading reactivation along the ancient volcanic corridor that snakes through the American West. McDermott is merely one of many vast calderas forged as the Yellowstone hotspot migrated beneath the North American plate. Others, like Idaho's Bruno Jarbidge caldera and the High Rock complex, also lie dormant, for now. But these sleeping giants share more than a common origin. They rest atop the same shifting tectonic foundation, influenced by the same mantle dynamics and linked by fault networks capable of transmitting seismic energy across vast distances. The reawakening of one could ripple outward, awakening others like a chain reaction set in motion beneath the surface of a continent unprepared for the consequences. If this dormant caldera truly begins to stir, the consequences could cascade across the region, setting off a geological chain reaction. Shifts in subsurface pressure or deep crustal flow might ripple outward, potentially influencing volcanic zones like Caleras, areas that haven't budged in thousands of years. This isn't idle speculation. In regions like New Zealand's Taupo Volcanic Zone, activity in one part of a volcanic field has been observed to precondition eruptions in neighboring zones. Could the U.S. face a similar unfolding of subterranean events?